the goal of this video is to create a planar two link manipulator like the one shown here. Note that gravity is not acting in the plane in which the manipulator is. The manipulator has two links as shown here. Each link can be described by an angle. Here it is theta one and theta two. We'll also put a dummy variable at the end effector. This is the kind of structure we're aiming for. There is a stand for this pin, for this for this place which holding the hinge joint. There are two joints and there are two pendulums. Once Copel SM is open, if you want and don't want this, you can just close it like this. Uh, first, we'll start creating the stand. So for that, I will create a cuboid. Okay, that's a cuboid. Uh, let's rename that as a stand. This is just um, a, a stand just to make it look like it is hanging from, uh, the pendulum is hanging from some object, but really this for this particular stand doesn't have any dynamics. So we can go to dynamic properties and switch off what is respondable. That is basically identifying collisions and then switch off the dynamics. Next, we'll add a joint. So that will say add joint revolute. Uh, let's change the dimensions for that. First, let's see how we can observe the joint. So I'll move it along the Z direction. Okay, now that we have it there, let's double click on Revolute joint and change this to 0.1 and 0.1. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, let's rename this as joint one. Now we want to put it right inside the stand. So what we'll do is we will make it a child of the stand. Then we'll uh, click on uh, move properties go to position. Uh, we want to set the position with respect to the parent frame, which is the stand, just make it zero, zero, zero. Okay, so it goes inside. We want to be shown slightly, um, move it slightly out, then maybe we need to change the Z coordinate. And that looks okay. So it's done. Now we'll create the pendulum. For that, we'll add a primitive shape, a cuboid. Here, the only thing we want is that the the pendulum should have a length of one meter. So it's one. Uh, let's move it to the side. So it translates, say, along uh, the x axis. Okay. Now we want this to be in the plane of uh, plane in this plane. And so for that, we want to rotate it about the y axis. So select the cuboid, click on rotation. Click on orientation. Uh, this beta is for y axis. So we'll just change that to 90. Okay, now you see it's uh, right here. It's in the plane. Now we want to move this right on top of the pin joint. So for that, the easiest way to do that is to first make it a child of joint. Uh, now we will take the move properties, position. First, we'll put 0, 0, 0. So what it does is basically puts the center of mass right at the point where we want, where the parent is. So now we want this to be translated uh, by 0.5. So let's try this. Okay, that doesn't work. Uh, we could try Y. Okay, that's the wrong one. It has to be the X. Okay, that looks good. Okay, let's uh, rename this as pendulum one and then just change, rotate the view. Okay, now what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another link and the easiest way to do that is to perhaps make a copy of this. So control C or Apple key C, uh, control V or Apple key V to paste. Uh, let's rename this as joint two, pendulum two. Let's make the joint two as a child of pendulum one. And so it's actually overlaid over here, so you cannot see it. But what we can do is we can say move. And instead of minus 0.5, let's try zero first. It moves there, but we want to move it right here. So it should be 0 0.5. Okay, now if you see it, it looks all good.
Now, one more thing before we uh, actually write code. If you look at this pendulum, the way it's set up is uh, y axis is up, x axis is this way. And so when you set theta one and theta two equal to zero, it should point right down. So it should be pointing along the negative y axis. Let's see if you can do the same thing here. So you see that x is here, y is this way, which corresponds to this, but the pendulum here is horizontal. So we want to move it down. So the easiest way to do that is the following. Uh, we will change the orientation of the stand. So go to stand, click orientation. And here we want to move, rotate by 90 degrees about Z axis. So if you do 90, it goes up. It's not what we want, we want minus 90. Okay, so this is how uh, it should be when you put zero, zero for the angles. Now that we got the pendulum uh, up there, uh, let us think of how to do position control. One way of doing position control is we can double click on a joint. Once you double click, you'll get this uh, scene object properties. There you can click on dynamic mode. It should be set to dynamic mode. Here you'll have multiple options. Uh, position control, velocity control, free will choose position. Uh, we will set the top, maximum torque and velocity to a very high value. And then we whatever angle we set here is what the uh, joint will try to go to. So let's try this. Set it to position control and specify the joint angle using uh, this target angle in degrees. So I double click on joint. Dynamic mode is already set. Go dynamic properties. Uh, control mode. So there is different modes. I'll choose position control. Here, as I said, I'll set a very high limit to the torque and velocity. And this looks uh, okay to me. Now I can do the same thing for the other joint. Click on, double click on join, show dynamic properties, make it uh, position control, set a high value and a high value. Now, since both of those joints are set to uh, zero, when you click on play, nothing happens, nothing moves. Okay, so one way of making it move is to perhaps set a different angle. So go to dynamic properties, set this to 90 degrees. So we expect that this pendulum will spring to a horizontal position, which is 90 degrees. When you try to do this, you see that it's, it's kind of struggling. And that's because of uh, the collisions happening between these two pendulums. If you look at this closely, you'll see that those pendulums might be intersecting and that's why they're colliding and that's that's, a, that's preventing you from setting the position. So what we'll do is we'll set the collision properties off and that might actually help it. So let's uh, do that. The way to do that is to click on pendulum, say dynamic properties. Here we'll turn the collisions off. So when two, uh, when anything collides with the pendulum, it will not be detected. You can do the same thing for pendulum two turn the collision off. And now we can play it. And you can see it sprang to 90 degrees. You could also do this for the other joints. So for example, if you want a joint one to go to, uh, let's say 45 degrees, then here we have 45, and then this is 90 degrees. Okay. So this is setting the positions from the GUI. But we want to do this through the code. So this is how you will do it through the code. Click on, um, right click on stand, say add, associate child script. Let's do a non-threaded Python script. Double click on the script. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll add some code. And this is sort of a repetition of what I've done earlier. You need to first create a joint handles. And I've already written the code for that. So I just copy paste that code. So you do that in the initialization. We'll also need to make them global. So make a joint one, global, joint two. Uh, the command to set the, so we look at two commands to set the position and uh, get the position. You can use set joint target position to set the, the angle. 
this maps to this same angle. Now, the difference being that this angle in the GUI is in degrees, but this angle will be in radians. And then if you want to check the angle, then you can use sim.get joint position. So we'll see how to use both of these. Now, more details about these commands are in the regular API. So if you go to the rec regular API and, and go to joint, joints, there is joint target position. What you need to do is specify the handle. We created joint one and give the position. If you want the joint, if you want to get the uh, joint angle, should be uh, get joint position. So you can basically give the handle and give you the position. So we'll use, see how to use both of these commands. Okay, so we'll do that in actuation. So what we'll do is we'll set, um, sorry, sim dot set joint target position. You need to give the handle. So that's going to be joint one. And we said it should be uh, 90. So we will, sorry, it's 45. So math dot pi divided by four and sim dot set joint target position joint to math dot pi divided by two, that's 90 degrees. Okay, before we run this, uh, I'll comment it out. Okay, uh, remember we already set that the angle, so we'll put that back to zero so it doesn't interfere. So let's put this back to zero and this one to zero. And now let's confirm that it's actually set to zero. So when you run this, it's still at zero. Now let's go back to the code and uncomment this part. So it's now set through the code. When you run this, you see that spring back to the angle. So this is actually setting the angle. Now, as I said, if you if you want to check the angle, then what you do is you use the other command sim dot um, get joint position. So sim dot get joint position. For that, you need to give the joint handle. So joint one, and let's say that we'll call this theta one. Yeah, similarly, for the other one, theta two is sim joint angle two. So now to print this, what I'll do is uh, I can print this in one line using the following command, which I just made a, uh, a note of that. So I'm just going to copy paste from my notes. Okay, so this prints theta one and theta two. So the output will be seen here. So let's run this. Okay, so if I uh, stop this, you can see it's continuously Printing theta one and theta two, theta one being 45 degrees, which is 0 0.78, and pi by two, pi divided by two is 1.5. So it's doing its job. So let's uh, let's proceed. Let's try to uh, let's let's try to do the next step, which is put an put a, a dummy on the called the end effector over here, and then try to trace that curve as the manipulator moves. So what we'll do here is we'll say add dummy, let's call it end effector. We'll make it a child of pendulum. We'll increase its size. Let's make it uh, 0.15 and a color of black. You know, it's not visible in the screen, but it'll soon be visible. So what I'll do is to make it visible is uh, move it reflect the parent, which is the pendulum, put this zero, sorry, zero, zero, zero. You see it appears here, but what we want to do is we want to place it right here. So, which means we need to move it by 0 0.5, and there it is. Okay, we can view it closely like this, looks good. Okay, now, Let's uh, uh, let's try to move this manipulator in some prescribed fashion. Okay, so I'm just going to specify a time-based trajectory. Uh, what I have in mind is uh, theta 
one equals math dot pi. Uh, let me first get time t equals sim dot get simulation time. And now I'm going to put uh, theta is math dot pi times t divided by six and theta two equals math dot pi into t divided by three. Okay, and then I want this to be theta one and theta two. Okay, note that I'm overwriting theta one, but here it's not a big deal. Okay, now with this, I can run this. You can see it's uh, moving in some periodic fashion. Okay, it'd be nice to make a trace of the black uh, end effector. So for that, we use uh, something we've done in the past. Uh, we need to add a graph, uh, sorry, add a drawing object. And so what I'll do is I just, uh, instead of going through the regular API, I'll just put the code here and then see how it works. But this is something I've done in one of my previous videos. So this is basically getting the handle for end effector. This is setting up the trace using add drawing objects. Uh, it's it basically would be uh, in red color. It would be a thick line of line width five. Uh, this is the number of red dots available for it to strew. Uh, and then this is some other options which you can check in the regular API. So I'm going to make these global. Now that I've done that, I need to actually draw them in the figure. So for that, there are some other commands which uh, are as follows. We'll get the end effector position. So we'll do this in the sensing code. So this basically get the end effector position with respect to the world. It's stored in end effector position. And to actually draw this, we need to use add, we need to use add draw object. So sim drawing object item end effector trace, which is a, which is this one. And then we need to plot the X, Y, Z position of the object. Okay. Let's try this out. Yeah, so you can see it produces this uh, sort of beautiful looking figure by just changing the angles. 